Hey, are you thinking about moving to Bay Park, California, but you're not quite sure if it's gonna be a good fit for you and your family? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna share with you all the pros and cons of living in Bay Park, California and raising your family in Bay Park, California. And we're gonna get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel and you wanna learn everything there is to know about living in San Diego and the surrounding suburbs, make sure to hit that subscribe bell and notification button so that you could be the first to know about any market updates here in San Diego. My name's Emily Benito. I'm a local real estate agent and a mom, and I'm really passionate about helping families just like you every day make their move to San Diego, and I love it. So whether you're looking to move in three weeks or three months or even a year, make sure to give me a call, shoot me a text, send me a message so that I can help you and your family make a smooth move. All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about Bay Park, California, which holds a very special place in my heart because we actually lived in Bay Park for a while and that is when I brought home my first son. We were living in Bay Park. So that is um, takes me back to my baby years with Bunny. We absolutely love living there, so I can't wait to share with you all the pros and cons of living in Bay Park. Here we go. All right, so Mission Bay is a really awesome community. It's a small, tight-knit community just east of the Fry Freeway and Mission Bay. So the hillside homes all have amazing views of the Pacific Ocean and Mission Bay and the perfect view of the SeaWorld fireworks. It is a small community that was developed primarily in the 50s and 60s. So the homes are on the smaller end, the lots are on the smaller end, but there are developers who have gone in and either flip the existing homes or just uh, leveled out the original 1,200 square foot house and built a monstrous 3,000 square foot home covering the entire lot. So you have a gorgeous large home, but not much yard. But with the view of the ocean, I think it's a great trade off. So let's get into the pros. Number one on the list are the views. They are epic in Bay Park. So whether you have a home that has a view or just driving home, um, the views from the roads are epic and you get to see the most amazing sunsets in the summer and fall like nothing you've ever seen before so hands down the views from bay park you're looking out onto the bay and beyond that is the pacific ocean so the sunsets are the most amazing sunsets i have ever seen especially in the fall there is nothing like it those san diego sunsets we get made fun of a ton because everyone takes out their phone and starts taking photos of the sunset and do you ever look back at the sunset pictures Probably not, but it's just that epic. And living in Bay Park, you get to see that every day. So for far, number one, the best thing about living in Bay Park for me and what I miss the most are the sunsets. Number two on the list for me, something that I miss the most is all the cool stuff that you can do that's really close by. First of all, you're super close to the Bay and the Bay has parks all around it and a boardwalk going all the way around it, which is basically a bike path so you can walk your dog, walk your kids, take a jog, whatever you wanna do, rollerblade if that's your jam. Um, but there are tons of parks all along the bay as well that wrap all the way out to the ocean. So to be able to have access to multiple parks so your kids don't ever get bored and it's on the water, which is pretty awesome, is was pretty epic for us raising the kids when they were little. But then you have all the stuff you can do actually on the bay. So we belong to Freedom Boat Club, so we're able to take out a boat whenever we want to. Um, so you don't have to actually own a boat to enjoy the bay. You can rent a boat. They have all water sport um, equipment you can use too, like all the stuff you usually rent when you're on vacation, like jet skis or paddle boards or all of that stuff, they do right on Mission Bay. So you can just rent it from any of the hotels. And there's some small businesses that rent that kind of equipment out too. So you can literally just daycation right there on the bay, which is minutes from Bay Park. We also love barbecuing and just hanging out on the bay. It's just really serene, calm, and the water is always calm. It's not the cleanest water in the world. It's not like the ocean, but it is just a really easy place to go hang with the family because you're not dealing with... Um, a lot of parking issues. There's parking everywhere. There is uh, calm waters for the kiddos to play on the sand and just get their little feet wet if you've got young ones. I just thought it was a really easy place to go by myself with my kids and spend some time. And of course, you're also really close to the ocean. So the beach is 15 minutes away from uh, Bay Park. So we would go down to Pacific Beach or Mission Beach down to Belmont Park, which is at, essentially like a little amusement park right on the boardwalk. It has roller coasters and arcades and great food. And so um, my husband and I would love to go down there and grab some good food, drink, have a beer, 
and then let the kids go crazy at the amusement park and then head over to the beach and play for a bit and then come back and forth. First of all, the prices are really crazy living closer to the beach, but also it gets really congested with not only people that live there, but all the tourists and the people coming from other areas of San Diego. It just packs out uh, the beaches. So it's really nice when you live in Bay Park because you can just cross over to the other side of the five freeway and your home. So you don't have to sit in gridlock getting in and out of the beach um, on the weekends. We're still at number two, going along with all the things to do nearby. So there is a, actually a great hiking trail going through Tecolote Canyon, which is a mountain ridge that runs through between Bay Park and Claremont, which is right there as well. So if you like hiking or just going and taking your dog for like a walk on the trails instead of the streets, you've got Tecolote Canyon, which is amazing and so convenient because it's literally right there. And finally, my favorite things to do in Bay Park are go to the hotels and be a daycationer in our very own town. It is so fun. You get to be a vacationer, have yummy vacation cocktails, the kids can go swimming in the pool, and you just feel like you're on full-on vacay vibes only minutes from your home in Bay Park. Our favorite places to go have been the Dana, which is great. We stay there during the 4th of July weekend. Uh, Hilton Hotel has an amazing pool, so that's super fun. Both places are right there on the bay. You also have the Hyatt and the Catamaran. So check out those hotels, whether you're coming to stay for a true vacation or you're in town daycation. The kids love it. You love it. It doesn't cost a lot and you're really close to home. So uh, Bay Park, there's just a lot to do, especially as a family where you are living in a nice, quiet, suburban-ish neighborhood, but just minutes from so many attractions. Right, number three on the list is the ease of shopping and restaurants in Bay Park. I loved how easy it was to run around and get your stuff done and you didn't have to go far to get a really good bite to eat or a nice craft cocktail. So they have a Sprouts right in Bay Park, which is a really great um, supermarket. It's more of a health food store than a chain, you know, like a Vons or an Albertsons. So the food is a little bit healthier there. So you've got a Sprouts right in town. You have Costco that's really close by. And if you're looking for a Target and a Home Depot and a Vons, that's just about a few miles away in Claremont. So that's really close to get to. But right in Bay Park, uh, you also have some great restaurants. So Bocce has uh, Bocce is a staple. It's an old Italian restaurant in there since 1955. And uh, it's a super old school, high end Italian restaurant right there on Marina Boulevard. And the family about 10, 12 years ago, opened up a restaurant right next door for their kids called Luce. And Luce is um, more of a hipster kind of a, a restaurant. It is a kitchen and cocktail, so they have amazing craft cocktails and really yummy foods. So you can go during the day or you can go at night, but that was one of my ultimate favorite restaurants, so definitely check it out. They have incredible food. And if you're more of a divey bar kind of person, then we've got Shore Club and the Dive Bar for you. Both are great sports bars. You're gonna be able to get drinks, yummy tacos, burgers, that whole thing, Sunday brunch, NFL. I used to hit those places before I had kids all the time and they're still there and going strong. So you have something for everyone in Bay Park and they just opened up a beer gardens too, which I think is really cool. Um, they have a whole food fish market and Cecil's, which um, you can get your premium meats from the deli there. So, so there's a lot of cool stuff to do right here in Bay Park without ever having to go far. All right, number four on the list is the price of real estate in Bay Park. Now, I'm not saying that Bay Park is like an affordable community compared to the rest of San Diego, but what I am saying is compared to other coastal communities, Bay Park is extremely affordable. Its neighboring town is Mount Soledad, and then you're gonna go up to La Jolla and Solana Beach and Del Mar, and the price does just keep going up and up and up, and those are much more affluent neighborhoods. So you are able to get into a neighborhood that has beautiful of uh, Mission Bay, that Pacific Ocean, gorgeous sunsets, for about 1.4 million, which is amazing for a view home. All right, and number five on the list is location. Bay Park has an amazing location. It is in central San Diego. As far as the county goes, you're smack dead in the middle, you're on the coast, and you're only 10 minutes north of the freeway and downtown San Diego. So if you travel a lot, it's a really great community to live in because you can take an Uber ride and be at the airport in 10, 15 minutes. Amazing, that was the best part. One of the five best things of living in Bay Park. The same thing with downtown. Like if you like to uh, get into the city and do um, have a nightlife or culture and the museums, everything is close to Bay Park because you're right off the five, but you get to be in the coastal community. So you're not tucked all the way up in North County in the sleepy beach towns. 
or in La Jolla where you're like really deep in the village, which don't get me wrong, those communities are amazing, they're affluent, they're very expensive. Um, so the next best thing is living in Bay Park. All right, number six are the schools. There are actually a lot of schools to choose from when you're living in Bay Park, everything from private schools, public schools, and charter schools. There's even a Spanish immersion school um, nearby, high tech high. So um, you have a lot of options as a parent, whether you're looking to go public, private, or charter. All right, let's talk about the cons. The number one con for me living in Bay Park or for any coastal community for that matter is the weather because it is usually much cooler than it is inland. So you have days that are mostly in the 60s and low 70s and you have overcast almost every morning um, and if you're lucky, it burns off by noon or 1 p.m., but you do have way more overcast days than not, and that's something I do not miss living near the coast. Number two on the list is traffic getting on the freeway and off the freeway. That was a nightmare, and it's still a nightmare. So there are uh, three uh, exits on the five freeway near Bay Park, and that is Balboa, SeaWorld Drive, and Mission Bay, and all of them are very congested getting on the freeway and off the freeway. I would say a good 15 to 20 minutes because everyone from Pacific Beach, parts of La Jolla, even Ocean Beach and Bay Park are bottlenecking those three um, on ramps. And so that has always been a pain in the butt. Um, coming home from work, same thing. You're sitting at the exit ramp for about 10, 15 minutes, just inching your way off those exits. So that is a definitely a con. If you're someone who cannot stand traffic and you're needing to commute on the freeway during uh, rush hour times, that's something to consider. I don't think you can really get away from that. Living anywhere in San Diego, you're gonna have rush hour, but it was um, extra bad during the mornings living in Bay Park because again, you're getting all those communities bottlenecking into three uh, freeway entrances. All right, number three on the list is the size of the homes. So you are living near the coast and the homes were built in the 50s and 60s. And what that usually means is the lots were way smaller. So you're looking at lots that are anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 square feet. Homes are anywhere from about 800 square feet and they can go all the way up to 3,000 if they've recently been rebuilt homes by a developer. But the original homes and the footprints are pretty small. And the home that we actually lived in was about 950 square feet, a two bedroom, one bath. It was just me, Brett, and we brought Benny home as a baby, so it was fine. But once I got pregnant with Bodie, it was time to leave and we moved to Claremont where we were able to get more space for a better price and that's when we bought in Claremont. So if you're someone who likes a lot of space and privacy and space between homes and land in the backyard and maybe a bigger home to spread out, you may consider looking further inland because you're gonna get more space as you go inland. But if you're okay with smaller lots, smaller homes uh, for the trade-off of an epic location and view, then I think you'll be okay. But one of the downsides of Bay Park are most of the homes, unless they've been flipped, are on the smaller side. Number four on the list for cons in Bay Park has got to be the curb appeal. So I love Bay Park. I love the views, but it is not La Jolla. It is not hoity-toity. Um, you have homes that are totally run down and in desperate need of renovations or a developer to come in and save the day and give the home some love. And then you have homes that have been uh, beautiful custom homes that have been built that are worth $2 million and up and everything in between. So you don't have that same beautiful curb appeal that you may have in some of the more affluent neighborhoods. You are in Bay Park. I wouldn't say it's up and coming. It is It is here, it's a move into today, but it wasn't always expensive to move into. So you have some beat up homes in your neighborhood and you have some beautiful homes. So um, if you were looking for something that is super bougie, you may not be happy with Bay Park because it is uh, definitely a little bit more eclectic when it comes to the neighborhood. All right, so there you have it. I had six pros and four cons, and I was trying to think of two more cons to add in there, and I just couldn't because I just love Bay Park. It is a great location, has awesome restaurants and bars and shops nearby. It's really family friendly. It's got great schools. There's not really much bad to say about Bay Park, um, except for the few items that I mentioned that I don't really think are real de um, deal killers in the big scheme of things. But if I missed anything, I would love for you to drop it in the comments. For more information on Bay Park, make sure to check out my vlogs, 
and my map tours of Bay Park so you can get a better sense of the community and see if Bay Park is a good place for you and your family. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me a message so that I can help you and your family make a smooth move too.